Well, hey, you guys. Happy Friday. I'm going to have to stand on my tiptoes. Stop. <laughs> you don't stand on your tiptoes. I'm not. I'm so Marvin that. and I are here tonight to do a Friday night Bible study. I know, right? I know. I know we we, we messing night. it up for somebody wanting to go to the club. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Back in the day on a Friday night, we'd have been getting ready to. Right? I'm totally joking. There's no sin in no, going out having a good been. time, right? <laughs> no, I'm not joking about that part. Yeah. I'm talking about I'm not trying to condemn anybody going out. So oh, no. tonight, Marvin doesn't feel well. So y'all be praying for him. He's getting over an upper respiratory infection. So I said, honey, you introduce us. He said, mm -mm, your energy might be yeah. better, right? <laughs> you have the best energy. He ain't now. keeping that same energy, right? And so tonight, the reason why we're standing up, right, even though I'm on my tiptoes, because I felt like the Lord told me that we needed to stand up to present the word on tonight. Amen. Amen. Hey, Felicia. So let me make sure. I share. Thank you all for joining us on tonight. Let me yes. go see where it says Marvin Price is live. Let's see. Yeah. It says you tagged me in a post, which I don't know about you having tagged me in a post, but okay. okay. I'm coming, y'all. I'm just sharing it on my page. Okay, so super excited to be here tonight. Look, it says I'm watching. You good. So as I was cooking, the Lord laid it on my heart. We were going to share this word um, a few weeks back. And then, you know, we did Bible study last week. And so as Friday is winding down, honestly, I wanted to sit down and shove my face with food, right? But the Lord was like, you need to do Bible study this week. And so we had committed to get back to being we consistent, right? Uh -huh. Hey, Glenn. Up, Glenn. Hey, Audrey, Audrey, Sister Audrey. And we had committed to being consistent with the Lord because he will not give you any rest when you're not doing his work. Amen. 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 And so the word we wanted to share, and Marvin is like, what are we talking about? Right? It's <laughs> <laughs> put out in deep, into deep water, right? So tonight we're going to be coming from Luke 5. And we're just going to start at verse one. Mm -hmm. So be, to be honest, I don't know how the Lord is going to lead, right? I'm going to lead the scripture. We already we know by the Holy Spirit, so. that the Holy Spirit is in charge of Bible study. Amen. Yeah. But I believe that the revelation that God will give all of us through the word of God, if we open up our hearts and our minds and let God abide in us, he said, if, um, if I be lifted high, I'll draw all men unto me. And he said, and when we hear him not, to not harden our hearts, that he'll come in and abide with us. On, on tonight, we're inviting the Lord to abide in and with us. Amen? Amen. So in Luke 5 and 1, it says, One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats. If you're just joining us, we're in Luke 5. Mm -hmm. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Mm -hmm. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. You're so funny to my, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> like old church folk, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. hey James. And so um, it says, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. So that is the message of tonight's scripture, put out into deep waters and let down a net for the catch. So I want you to, if you're taking notes and you're a note taker, write that down. But if not, for sure, remember that. Amen. And then in Luke 5, 5, it says, Simon answered, Master. Right? Now, I was wondering how he knew to call Jesus Master, but we're going to talk about that in a second, right? He said, Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the net. And so, glory to God, how often does God say, Garlinda, Marvin, put out in the deep water, go a little further out, do a little <coughs> bit more, like tonight when Marvin is like, I'm like, honey, we're going to do I will say tonight, and he's like, I, I'm oh. taking my antibiotics. <laughs> he wasn't complaining <laughs> oh, or anything, no, but kidding. he's down for the count after 3 o'clock in the afternoon, right? But the Lord said, put out into deep water, and what happens is a lot of times, we do just enough to get by. Mm -hmm. We do just enough to get by on our job. And I'm not talking about everybody, but we do just enough to get by in ministry. We do just enough to get by in school. We do just enough to get by. And and now here it is that the Lord in Luke 5, 5 is saying to, um, and Luke 5 and 4 says, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Well, that right there is revelatory, right? Let down the nets for a catch. The Lord didn't say put out into the deep water and let's go see if we're going to catch something. Mm -hmm. He maybe. said, no, he said, it. let down the nets for a catch. The Lord knew there was going to be something out there if Simon put out into deep water, right? He knew that something was going to be out there for him if he would just go a little further out. Amen? Amen? And so if we would just go a little further out, if we would put out into deep water, the Lord knows the catch is out there. Glory to God. And so a lot of times we get re weary, we get tired, right? We're working jobs, we're in school, we're running businesses in addition to those jobs. And we just have so much going on, but the Lord said, I'm a jealous God. Mm -hmm. 
That's why he was beating Marvin and I up about Bible study, right? He said, I won't have any other gods before me. I'm not going to have school before me. I'm not going to have your job before me. You make time for everything else, right? Put out into deep water and let down the net for a catch. You want to say something? Mm, Amen. <laughs> so it says in Luke 5 and 5, Simon answered, Master, we work hard all night and haven't caught anything. How many times have we said, God, okay, I hear you telling me I need to go over here and do this. God, I need, I hear you telling me I need to go over there and do that, but I already did that and I didn't catch anything. Mm -hmm. I've already been there, done that, and I didn't reap a harvest from it. I've been there, done that, and I mean, but Peter didn't say that. Mm -hmm. See, I like Peter. Peter was like, okay, master, but he did talk back a little bit, right? Because he didn't immediately launch that's out. Peter, he still man. had to have some words, <laughs> Peter, right? Yeah, How many Peter. of y'all were like that growing up? You had to have the last word. That was me, right? I still am like that to a certain extent, right? You like you ain't gonna get the last word, right? <laughs> so anyway, I digress. So in Luke 5 and 5, Simon answered, Master, we worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. Because you say so. Glory to God. So instead of arguing with God, well, God, I don't want to do that. God already did that. God already tried that. God already been there, done that. God, I'm tired, right? He didn't even murmur or complain. He said, but because you said so. Well, it didn't necessarily believe that, mean that he believed him either. Don't matter. He, he was did, obedient. He was obedient. Felicia said that, right? right? So <laughs> Amen. it doesn't necessarily mean that you will have complete um, belief. He just wants you to do it. Amen. Right? Because they didn't really believe him at the time. They didn't know very much about Jesus right? at that time. Amen. And so, um, so it wasn't because they, you know, in that moment, it wasn't because they necessarily really had faith or believed in him. Yeah, I'm having to stand on my tiptoes. My toes uh, start to hurt. Let me was, get on the chair. Yeah, it wasn't because, it, you, didn't, you know, right. Peter, Simon at the time, uh, not yet Peter. Um, Don't but let me fall. Recognize this thing. <laughs> Keep going. I got it. <laughs> okay. but, but that statement that doesn't necessarily mean that he uh, faith. believed or had faith. Amen. He, just, well, he was just being obedient. And many uh, non believers are simply obedient to the word, right? Mm -hmm. And they're still blessed. So it works that way sometimes. Because he said, I reign on the just and the just because a lot of times people say, "Well, why are they getting blessed? They some hell raisers. Right? But they why are they getting the blessed? They doing obedience. the wrong thing because it's a principle. Right? Amen. So Marvin said something so perfect. It said that they didn't really know who Jesus was because I wondered why Simon called him Master. Right? Hey Tony, how you doing? Bronco Pride. Up, Tony? Right? So I didn't understand why Peter called him Master because I was thinking when I initially read this that it was a parallel scripture to something else. But come to find out, this is the second time. That they had been called to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, why didn't they follow him the first time, right? And don't and I, and I had to ask Mark. I had I was talking to Marvin. And I was like, you know, this wasn't the first time that they saw Jesus, and like you just said, they didn't really know who he was. They were watching him from afar off, mm -hmm. right? So let's go over to Matthew four eighteen twenty two. Felicia said, I have so much trouble in this area of obedience. Don't we all? But cool for you, that what's awesome is that you can admit that, right? Mm -hmm. That you can admit your shortfalls and your right. shortcomings. See, a lot of people won't. They won't say, oh, I struggle in this area or I struggle in that area. A friend of ours, we were talking about that earlier today. People like to hide behind or hide in church, right? But they really have things that they struggle with. Hey, Miss Renee, be obedient the first time. Hello, right? It says, sometimes I think I can do better. Like if I do something else good, that can make up for me not being <laughs> Well, so we want to rationalize with I mean, God, I mean, right? We're going back to the previous scriptures where, you know, we've done this before. You know, right. we, we've been, we, we fished the same area before. We, right. we, we're here all night. We just dried our nets. Nothing's neck. happening. Mm -hmm. But yet you want me to do this? Right. All right, I do. You know? so that's such a great point. Okay, I'm going to say this and I know I keep saying that, but it's so yummy. So it says that when Jesus walked by them, at, we're in Luke 5, if you're just joining us. It says when Jesus walked by, I'm sorry, was standing at the lake of Gennesaret. It says they were washing their nets. They were finished. They were getting ready to stop working. They're getting ready to go and do whatever fishermen do, right? Yeah. Whatever Peter and his brother were getting ready to do on that Friday night, right? I'm joking. I don't know if it was a Friday night. They were getting ready to go sit down. And so turn with us to Matthew 4, 18, 22. Hey, Matthew, Kenna. Matthew 4, 18, 22. 4, I'm sorry, Matthew 4, right. 18 through 22. Right. I was, I'm talking fast, y'all. I'm just excited. Yeah, you you got to forgive me. I'm sorry. So, slow down. Okay, Marvin said slow down. Okay. 
He ain't the boss of me. Yes, he is, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Matthew 4, 18. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. It says, Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in, their, in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. And Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, healing every disease and sickness among the people. I'm going to share this one more thing. And it says, news about him spread all over Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon-possessed, those having seizures, and the paralyzed, and he healed them. Large crowds from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and the reason, I'm sorry, and the region across the Jordan followed him. They heard the Sermon on the Mount. In addition to that, um, he talked about anger. In addition to that, Jesus talked about lust. He talked about retaliation. They were with him. They were. They, he, he said, put down your nets and follow me. They were following Jesus. So at some point along the time when Jesus was teaching about worry and about being needy and about criticizing others and about all these different things, they stopped following Jesus and went back to what they were doing. Mm hmm at some point, they just said, okay, well, that was family. all well and good, right. but I'm going back over here. And, right. oh, thank you so much for sharing the scripture, Felicia. And so, how many times do we do that? At some point, God has said, put down everything and come follow me over this way. Put down everything and come do what I'm calling you to do over here. But then because... We, we feel like been there, done that. Oh, I know that. I know how that story is going to end, right? Or yeah. I've already heard you preach that sermon. I've already heard that message. We go back to what's familiar, just going back to what we were already doing because we think we know best. Mm -hmm. And it seems like, or appears to me, that they went back to their normal way of living and they stopped following Jesus. Right. And they were watching him from afar off, right? So then... The reason I say that is because in the commentary for my book, for my Bible, and oh, I don't want to get ahead of myself. You want to say anything? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Let me go back. Uh, so uh, in Luke 5 and 6, when they had done so, so here it is in Luke 5 and 5. Master, we worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. In 6, Luke 5 and 6, when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. So Jesus said... The initial command was put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. He knew the catch was there. Glory to God, where God is telling us to go, he knows that that's the place. He knows that's the catch. He knows that's the place of blessing. He knows that's the place of promise. He knows that's the place of success. But when we think we know better and we go back to what's familiar and we go back to the things that we were already doing, although we watched him perform miracles, they watched him cast out devils, they watched him heal the sick, they watched him... Um, they watched him preach to the people that were hurting in their spirits, right? They watched him do all these things, yet they still went back to what was familiar. Their human nature was to go back to what was comfortable. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so that's what the Lord is wanting us to share with you tonight. He, he, and while we're standing up, because y'all my feet, I'm standing on my tiptoes to keep up with Marvin, right? <laughs> Um, we're standing up because the Lord said it's time to stand up and stand on the word of God. It's not enough to continue sitting down and saying, oh, yeah, amen, you know, hallelujah, that's good. We have to be active participants in the word of God. And the Lord is saying, put out in the deep water. I'm calling you to deeper waters. I'm calling you to better places. The catch is over there, says the Lord thy God. Amen. And so that's why he wanted us to get on here to share with you on tonight. Go ahead what you want to share. No, <laughs> I'm just You got something young. I know following, you do I'm, what you want. I'm following along. Okay, you're so sweet. You got something to say. I mean, I'll share whenever. Okay, cool. When I, when I be quiet? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, in Luke 5 and 4, he said, when he had finished speaking, he said, Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. <coughs> and I just want to keep sharing with you, put out into deep water. That's what the Lord is saying. We were supposed to share this message however long ago and so obviously it was for tonight or we would have shared the word amen and the lord is saying i have this great 
catch over here for you. But in Luke 5 and 6, it says, when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So when you're wondering, where's the abundance coming from? Where's the harvest coming from? Where's the overflow coming from? It's over there in the deep water. Mm -hmm. It's over there in that area that you're uncomfortable in. It's over there in the area that you're trying to avoid, right? right. It's over there in the area that I called you to, but you don't want to go over there. Amen. You don't want to go over there and do what I called you to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so in Luke 5 and 6b, okay, okay. Oh gosh, so I'm going to calm down. <laughs> So it says, when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled to their partner in the other boat to come and help them. Glory to God. If you, when you go, when you and I go where God calls us to go, when you and I go do what God has called us to do, we're going to have to bless somebody else because it's going to be too much. It's going to be such an overflow that, we're, that God is like, call your brothers, call your sisters. You're going to have to call somebody to get help because you're not going to be able to catch it all. You're not going to be able to maintain it all. You're not going to be able to hold it all. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. When you put out in the deep water to let down the nets for a catch, God is saying, I'm not, you remember on Forrest Gump <laughs> when he first bought oh, the yeah. fishing boat? Yeah, nothing. <laughs> you remember when he bought the shrimp boat and then the first catch came up and the little net opened up and it was a lock, it was a license plate, mm -hmm. it was one, it wasn't even a shrimp in there, right? And every night he would go out and he'd go out fishing and nothing happened. And then what ended up happening was there's this huge storm and his boat was the only boat Mm -hmm. that didn't get destroyed that night in the storm. And so that is how the Bubblegum Shrimp Company came about and how he found success because there were tons of other fishermen out there. Right. And Larger they were boats. laughing at him, right? They were laughing at Larger his little boats, boat. More crews. But he let down the net for a catch. Right. Even when he kept getting just the little license plates and the the raggedy stuff. I don't even think it was a fish that fell out onto the thing, right? <laughs> but he was committed. He yeah. was obedient because he had promised Bubba, I'm going out here and I'm going to start this fishing company, right? And I'm going to do this. So the Lord said, I promise that if you go out, put out in the deep water, you're going to let down your net. There's going to be a catch. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. So here it is in Luke 5, 6b. So they signaled their partners, you guys come over here, right? In the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sing. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Think about it. They've been fishing all night. Then after they've been fishing all night and washing their nets, they had to sit through Jesus' sermon because he was sitting on the boat preaching first, right? Mm -hmm. So when he finished preaching, that's when he said, Simon, take me out. Go put out in the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. They could have easily said, but we're tired. Right. I don't want to go out there anymore, right? We already washed the nets off. And so here it is. Imagine if they had not done that, but Peter was able to bless not only John, James, and Zebedee, he was able his to bless partners. all the, of the his partners, partners, all of the other fishermen, because he was obedient to God. When we are obedient to God, the blessings are for other people too. It's not just for us. Amen. But if we won't go be obedient, put out in the deep water and let down the nets for a catch in an area that we've already been fishing in and it looked like it was a dry well, like nothing was there, up for other people that are going to receive a harvest we're messing it up for other people that are going to be blessed by virtue of our obedience mm -hmm. glory to god mm -hmm. so then in luke 4 and i guess that was 4 and 7 i apologize in luke 4 and 8 when simon peter saw this so mind you initially remember he called him master Right, and he had seen Jesus before. They had they had followed Jesus before, mm -hmm. but this time was different because he saw other people receiving a miracle before. He saw other people being blessed before. Mm -hmm. You ever think about in your journey in salvation? Because I used to do this. I was totally guilty mm -hmm. of it. Right? I was like, that was for everybody else. Mm -hmm. Christ died for everybody else. Jesus died for everybody else. The Lord came for everybody else. I struggled to believe that it was for me, right? Because it wasn't yet personal. And then when it became personal, I understood, oh, I'm on fire now. Well, we about to do some cheetah flips around. Wherever you send me, Lord, we're going to do cheetah flips. Amen. That means I'm really excited about it, right? So it wasn't until it became personal for Simon Peter and that the miracle happened for him. And that the miracle happened for the people around him that he acknowledged Jesus was the Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, he knew, of course, that he was the Messiah, but but not for, it wasn't personal. Yeah. Amen? Which yeah. I mean, no, not yet. He wasn't revealed to them at that time. Mm -hmm. So he, he merely saw him as a man mm -hmm. um, and not the Messiah at the time because he wasn't revealed to him spiritually Amen. Uh, at, at that right. time. 
So it's hard to believe in people when you just know them as their human self. Right. It's hard to believe in the miracles that they, that they can perform in their human I mean, self. Like nobody else was riding around Galilee performing miracles. <laughs> well, you know I, what I there, mean? There were a lot of things going on back in the time. <laughs> you know, like, uh, all kind of sorcery and things like that. That's true. That's true. And so, think so about people, that. people were conditioned to seeing things different um, or, or unusual. But there are a lot of things within this. There are a lot of um, stories within this story mm -hmm. uh, that's revealing. And one thing is that um, the areas in which you've been, uh, you, you've given up on, yeah. maybe the same area that your blessing resides, right? So I'll repeat Say it that, again. I'll repeat mm -hmm. it again. So, Preach! <laughs> so the areas that you've given up on, whatever that area is in your life that you've given up on, whatever that, whatever that place is or that person is or whomever that, whatever that thing is in your life that you've completely given up on, you're tired of it, you're, you're, you're tired of praying about it, you're, tired, you, you're frustrated about it, you're stressed about it, uh, you want it to just go away, that may be the area in which the Lord says, go back and throw your net and cast your net. Amen. Right? And what does that mean? Cast your trust in him. Not that, but in him. Amen. And the trust in him will, will, will be beneficial to you and bless you, not only you, but the whole, the, whatever, wherever, whoever that or who they are uh, around Amen. you, your partner, whoever those people may be, people who are close to you, uh, who are in partnership and agreement with you, they will be blessed as well. Amen. That's good. I remember, and the Lord brought this to my remembrance, um, probably like a week or so ago, but Marvin and I had gone to a church service way out in the country. I've never heard of, was it Mentor or Minor? Probably Mentor. Minor. I, don't Mentor. I don't know. Somewhere way Mentor out. Minor. Like going towards Whiteville. Y'all know how White. to say Whiteville, right? Whiteville. Shout out to Leon McLaughlin. So <laughs> when, when we went in Tiffany, so we went to that church, to that particular church service. At the time, we were doing filming for... Um, our pilot for, for our DIY show and the, when the prophet prophesied over us I thought it meant one thing mm -hmm. right that was in 2016 16. so it's 2020 so all that so when the so when the prophet when the prophet spoke over us and I heard what he said I done about passed out in the church because I'm thinking he's talking about what we're working on at the time but God gave me revelation. It wasn't even until a few weeks ago. And he brought the prophet's word back to my remembrance. And I was like, oh, that was it. Mm -hmm. Right? But it wasn't mm -hmm. what I thought it was. And it forced me to go launch out. It, it forced me to put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. And another put out in the deep water, I'm expecting to catch. Because God said it's over there. But the reason why I didn't realize what it was, because I assumed what the prophet was talking about. When they only see in part, right? right? And so I was thinking, oh, it's good what this prophet is talking about, right? And it was good, but it had nothing to do with what God was telling me. Mm -hmm. And nor I don't think that I asked for revelation because like Felicia was saying, I thought I already knew. <laughs> right. So how many times do we miss what God is trying to wanted to reveal? He may not reveal it till later on. Like you just said, God mm -hmm. had not yet revealed himself to um, to the disciples and so four years later I gained a revelation of the word that the man of God gave us that night was for this season was for today for this time mm -hmm. right and so anyway Luke 5 and 8 now he is personal for Peter amen mm -hmm. it says when Simon Peter saw this he fell at Jesus knees and said go away from me Lord I'm a sinful man glory to God when we acknowledge who God is you. in our lives we will fall to our knees. And like Isaiah, when he said, woe is me, I'm a man of unclean lips. Glory mm -hmm. to God. But angel said, don't worry, I got you. Burn the lips up, right? Mm -hmm. Because God wants to use us. But first we must come to him in submission and say, oh God, I'm not even worthy. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. What did John the Baptist say? One is coming that I'm not even worthy to strap his sandals, to tie his sandals. Glory to God. But all this time when Jesus, when Peter and those were following him before, it didn't say they fell at Jesus' feet. Right. It said they dropped their nets and followed them. Glory to God over in Matthew, what was it, 4 and 18. Mm -hmm. It said, as Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him, but they did not acknowledge that he was Jesus. Glory to God. They didn't they didn't even know at the time who he was. So what I wonder what made them follow him, right? Mm -hmm. It must have been something about him that said, Okay, well, I guess I'll drop what I'm doing and go follow him, <laughs> right. right? 
But it wasn't until the miracle was performed in their own lives. It wasn't until their need was met. It wasn't until they saw something that was so extremely overwhelming that it could only have been supernatural and it could only have been a miracle that it became personal. Glory mm -hmm. to God. Mm -hmm. So it says, when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, go away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Had Simon not gone out, his partners wouldn't have been blessed. Right. If you don't go out, how many people are missing out on their blessing? If we don't go out, how many people are missing out on their blessing, right? Because we're not being obedient to the word of God because we're worried about what, how we're going to pay for it. We're worried about how we're going to get there. We're worried about how we're going to do it. Worry, worry, worry. Doubt, doubt, doubt. Fear, 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 right? Mm -hmm. We're worried about all these things happening that could go wrong. Woulda, shoulda, coulda, right? But there's so many people waiting on us to put out into the deep water to let down our nets for a catch so they too can be blessed. Right. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. And so then it said, then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. Before he said, I will make you fishers of men. In Matthew 4, 18, he said, I'm going to make you fishers of men. But this time in Luke 5 <coughs> and 11, it says, then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. So I, so what the Lord wanted to prove to him is I, if you can catch fish, you can catch men. If you can trust me enough to go out in the deep water and let down your nets for, net for a catch. After you fished all night, you're probably tired, you're probably hungry, because I know they went out to eat raw fish unless they were doing sushi, but I don't know, at some point it could have <laughs> And so they've done all of that, and they got this great catch. It proved to them that they could be that which God called them to be. Amen. Amen. And then he said, so they pulled their boats up on shore. This time they left everything mm -hmm. and followed him. Glory mm -hmm. to God. What do you want to share? No, I mean, I'm, I'm following you, but it, it, it's, it all lines up with trust in Christ. Amen. I mean, trusting him, you know, trusting him at his word. Amen. You know, we, we want to, so, uh, we, so often what we want to do is trust other people's word. Mm -hmm. You know, we see people for validation. We see, uh, you know, people for, um, you know, for, you know, for their ideas or what they think and so on what you think about this which man? is important what you think about but that? if you trust That's them right. more than you trust the lord then you know it may <laughs> what you trust them for may fail well what if peter would have said to james john and zebedee y'all think we should go out yeah y'all th think we should go yeah, cast well, our nets out ask, well let, let me call somebody first let me, let me talk to one of my boys or and my validate partners what the lord is saying right let me talk to one of my partners right. because you know you know, they're tired. I want to make sure that... I don't know. want to trouble them at all. Right. <laughs> Come right? on, Jesus. Jesus. Think, look, look, the board's tired. Look at Jesus. Because Felicia said it a minute ago. She said, sometimes I think you are a barter is what I meant to say. Right. And we're all guilty of trying to fleece God. Sure. Everybody wants to Gideonize God, right? But he never did that again anywhere else in the Bible. Gave dew and dry and all. He never did that again, right? Mm -hmm. But it, it took Simon trusting God that, okay... Maybe he heard the word differently this time. Maybe he maybe he saw because well I did I do remember him seeing I re, do remember seeing him do all these things. I do recall him healing the sick because he healed um, Peter's mother in law. Right. Right. And so she had a fever and Jesus walked in and he touched her and took her by the hand. Mm -hmm. She got up, her fever broke, and she began to serve him. Right. I'm like, well, didn't any of y'all notice that? But don't we all notice the miracles that Jesus performs in our lives every single day? Don't we notice what he does for us? And don't we notice what he does for other people, yet we still have doubt? No, yeah, we, don't, we don't really recognize it. Because we think that every day uh, is, a, is given to us. Right. That every day that we're going to wake up the same as we did yesterday mm. and feel the same that we did yesterday. And, mm. and we, every day we wake up expecting something different but living the same way. Nothing changes. I, 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 our, 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 how we, uh, what we believe in as far as Jesus and miracles, we take it for granted. Amen. We don't say it. You know, many believers don't, won't say that they take Jesus for granted. Many believers won't say that they don't, you know, that they, they don't trust Jesus enough. Many believers won't say it out loud right. that they, um, you know, we, I just don't, I just don't know. I don't, I, I don't know if I believe that much in Him uh, because of the things that I'm going through. But 
it, it was that moment in, in that circumstance that he decided, I'm just going to just do it. Although I didn't I don't really believe it, and I don't know what's going to happen for me or not, but I'm going to be obedient, like someone Amen. said in, in, on the, um, in, the, in the feed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be obedient. You know, I, I've done this before. You know, if it works, it works. If it don't, it don't. But I've done this before. But I'm going to trust enough and say, you know, I'm going to be a be I'm, I'm going to be respectful enough, right? Mm -hmm. And how many of us are 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 not respectful enough to Christ? Mm -hmm. How many of us are more disrespectful to Christ than we are respectful to Him? You know, how much respect do we really give Christ mm -hmm. in our lives on a daily basis? You know, we have to reflect on that, and it's personal. Amen. You know, how much respect do you give Christ? And it became personal for Peter. So mm -hmm. if you just joined us and you go back and you listen, we were in Luke 5. And so I just want to share this and then we're going to wrap it up. Um, in my commentary, it says, um, this was the disciples' second call. So as we just shared, right? So mm -hmm. how many times has Christ called you? How many times has the Holy Spirit said, right? How many times has he said, go over there, let down your neck. I got you. Mm -hmm. Let down the net for a catch. This was their second call. So this was their second chance. And so when people tell you you've missed it, it's not true. Right. When people say that, you know, say that, you know, God's not going to do that for you again, it's a lie, mm -hmm. right? Because he said, my word would not retor return to me void. It would accomplish that which I sent it out to do. So whether you end up doing it with white hair or whether you end up doing it with gray hair or you end up doing it with colored hair, his purpose is still going to stand. He's mm -hmm. still going to get out of you. It, even if Peter hadn't have done it then, which thank God he did, he became the rock of the church. And this had to be his second call before he could become the rock. Glory to God. His second call. Yeah. He, he had no idea he was going to become the foundation of the church. Glory right. to God. A fisherman. Right. And so when we began to think, well, God can't use me because of this. God can't use me because of that. Even if it's things you still struggle in right now. And yeah. you believe that God can't use you. He used David. It's not because of your occupation that That's God right. calls you. You can argue. <laughs> well, I was talking about sin. I know, but, right. but, I, but also people think that their occupation. That's right. Um, their social status. Uh, or, or the, their economic status uh, may be a reason why God is not using them. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with who, who we choose to use That's right. and how we choose to use them. And so... Um, what I find, and this is no slight on anybody, I'm just sharing with you my experience, is that people that tend to be highly educated struggle to think like a child. Mm -hmm. They struggle to... Because they want to bring God down. They want to have God on an educational level like the Sadducees and the Pharisees. I'm not calling them that. But because they were high <coughs> thinkers and because they were um, educators and because they were educated. Because Marvin always talks to me about how Paul was um, learned, right? He studied. And so oftentimes I think when people are so knowledgeable in the natural realm that they struggle to become like little children. And he said that that's what we have to become mm -hmm. to understand. Mm -hmm. And so here it is, Jesus, I mean, I'm sorry, Simon Peter, this time became like a little child. He fell down to Jesus' knees. The last time he just walked off like, oh, okay, we'll follow you. He, he, but this time he, he was humble. Pride. Glory to God. He this dropped, time he, he fell to his knees and was like, uh-uh, I ain't even worthy for this. Right. Because it was personal for him. But it went on to say in my commentary, it says, they continued to watch Jesus. People are continuing to watch you. Glory to God. And they're trying to see, is she going to go all the way out or what? Right? She gonna, is he going to go all the way out there and do it or what? Because it says that, however, as he established his authority in the synagogue, healed the sick, and drove out demons, here he also established his authority, his authority in their lives because he met them on their level. Right. Glory to God. Jesus is willing to meet us on our level. The Lord is willing to meet us on our level. The Holy Spirit, God, is willing to meet us on our level if we would be obedient. Mm -hmm. And if we would be obedient, glory to God, it's not that he's saying you got to come up to me. He's saying I'm going to meet you where you Even are. Even when you're tired, are you Amen. willing? <laughs> Even when you're tired and just don't feel like you can go anymore, are you willing? Amen. Are you willing? That That's the... That, that's the them when they were tired I and mean, they didn't say that they were tired but come on it's if you don't say it was a test we are you willing he just said master we've worked hard all night we <laughs> haven't caught anything i hear you i hear you son i hear your daughter but are you willing he said but because you say so mm -hmm. 
I will let down the nets. Are you willing? Because now if anybody else would have come over and let, said let down Man, the nets, he'd have been like, good luck and God bless you, be heaven smell. Call him a few, hey, Paul, we'll call him a few a names. A couple of names, right? Call him a few names. But he said, but because you said so and so on tonight as we're closing up, the Lord wants us to share with you, but because you said so. Right. He said in Luke 5 and 4, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, mind you again, they had to sit through the right mm -hmm. before Christ even gave them the instructions. So sometimes we walk out too soon thinking we want to move too fast, thinking we know everything. Because see, what is, I want to go back. So Jesus in Luke 5, it said, one day as Jesus was standing by the lake with the people crowding around him, he saw the water's edge, two boats left there by fishermen. He got into one of the boats. They didn't invite him into the boat. Jesus went and got in the boat, right? So it says he went, he got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon. He was purposeful about getting into his boat. Mm -hmm. I already know that he was. It didn't say he picked from one of the two. Anybody he was purposeful he that guess. he got into Simon's boat and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. Simon was probably like, why well, pick my boat? Man, I'm tired. <laughs> you a bit tired of these folks. But Jesus realized, but you were following before. I ain't before. making no money tonight. Right? I ain't catching no fish. Hello. you were So when he said we've been um, fishing all night, that tells me either it was late at night or it was very early in the morning. Right. It was not at a time. Because he said... When he finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. He gave him a guarantee. Simon answered, Master, we worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. So tonight the Lord is saying, because if we would say to him, because you say so, I'm going out, I'm putting out into the deep water and I'm going to let down the net for a catch. No matter how tired you are, how, how many times you've been at that same spot. Doing the same thing. Doing the same thing. Over and over. Are you willing? There you go. Are you willing? Glory <laughs> that's what that's what the boy. Are you willing Amen. to be obedient to him? So I the Lord has blessed you all tonight because I'm still ready to do cheetah flips around the house, right? <laughs> because it's so good. Because God is go He wants to bless us so that we can bless other people. So are you that person that says, God, if I had money, I would give it, you know, to this person. If I had money, I'd pay off my parents' bills. If I had money, I'd help my friends. If I had this, and I'm not, it's not all about money, so I'm not making it, but if I had resources, right. right, I could provide housing, I could provide food, I could provide clothes, I could give more, right? The kingdom needs our service in order for us to be blessed, to bless other people. Mm -hmm. Amen? So here it is. The Lord said, Put out in the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Amen? Amen. So we're going to end on that. Well, can we pray right quick? <laughs> so, Father, we just come humbly before you. We ask for forgiveness of our sins and thought and word and deed. And, God, we pray that you are pleased on tonight with the word of the Lord. We pray that, God, you would meet and exceed, meet and, and exceed every need greatly and abundantly above all we can ask or think of everyone that is listening that was listening and that will hear this message later on god we thank you also that you would purpose it in their heart and that you will open the doors to their hearts their minds their body and their spirits they will put out into deep water and they will let their nets down for a guaranteed catch god because you are not a man lie nor the son of man that you should repent God, we thank you that when they go and that they're obedient, when we go and when we're obedient, God, that we'll be able to bless other people with that which you blessed us with, God, and that you will be glorified in the earth realm because people will see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. God, we thank you for blessing everyone on tonight, whether they're traveling, whether they're with family or loved ones, God, bless them in their homes where they are, bless them in their secret prayers, and heal the sick on tonight, God. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you for joining us tonight. Yeah. If you're just joining us, when you get a chance, hey, McKenna, when you get a chance to go back, we were in Luke 5. We pray that the word blesses you on tonight. And mm -hmm. please share it with someone else that you know will need to hear it so that they too can move forward in the things of God. Amen. You want to say something before we go? Mm -mm. Enjoy Amen. Your Enjoy your weekend. God <laughs> bless you. God bless.